When I first read this story, I had a physical reaction to the end of it because it comes completely out of left field. You're not ready for it and it's so horrifying. And no, I'm not just hyping the video. Wait until you hear the ending. It's, it's pretty intense. So fair warning, it's tough to listen to, but it's a great story. I hope you enjoy it. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right channel because that's all we do. And we upload three, four, even five times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please invite the like button to your destination wedding and assure them the dress code is 100% casual, but then actually have a black tie wedding. Also, please subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. Back in 1994, an 11-year-old named Mark was living just outside of Philadelphia with his family. And for the past few summers, he and his siblings would go up to this summer camp on Mount Kitney in a rural part of New Jersey, and they would stay there for about eight weeks every summer. And this year would be no different. So on June 23rd, Mark and his siblings and his family loaded up the minivan and they began their two and a half hour commute up to Mount Kitney. When they arrived, the parking lot is filled with parents dropping off their kids. And there's already a batch of campers that had arrived already that are coming down to meet the new campers. And in the middle of all of this chaos, one of Mark's friends from the previous summer, his name was Kyle, he was the same age as Mark, he saw Mark and he runs down and he excitedly tells Mark that they had been placed in the same cabin this year. And so Mark is thrilled the summer is already off to a great start. So for the next hour or so, Mark and his siblings and Kyle, they begin moving all of their stuff up to the cabins. And then at some point, all the parents left and all the campers were instructed to head over to the big dining hall where the camp director and some of the camp counselors were gonna go over expectations and scheduling over the next few days. So Mark and Kyle make their way over to the dining hall, they sit down one of the long tables next to a couple of their buddies and they listen in while the director goes over the rules and the regulations and the director would make a special point like they do every year to remind all the campers that the faraway dock is absolutely off limits. So don't ask about it, don't try to swim out to it, just leave it alone. The main cluster of buildings that made up the camp was situated right up against this huge man-made lake that was quite long and fairly narrow. And on one side of this lake was the designated swimming area, and then this side they didn't even use for the camp. And within the swimming section, there was a main dock that extended fairly far out into the water that they divided on one side was the weaker swimmers, and on the other side of the dock was the more advanced swimmers and then farther out past the dock were these two floating docks, these square floating docks. There was one that was maybe about 10 meters away from the head of the main dock, and then there was the so-called far away dock that was absurdly far away. In fact, no one really knew why it was out there to begin with. It was at least 100 meters away from the head of the main dock. There were lots of conspiracy theories about why the far away dock was actually off limits because the camp staff never actually explicitly said what their reasoning was for not allowing anyone to go near it. They just said it was very dangerous. Most campers believed it was just because the far away dock was so far away. It was a dangerous swim to be making even for an experienced swimmer. Other campers had heard a rumor that years earlier someone had swam out and then gotten sucked underneath. There was apparently some suction underneath the stock and they got sucked underneath and they drowned. And then the most outlandish conspiracy theory was the dock was not actually a dock at all. It was a lid that was covering over a secret tunnel that went into the lake. But regardless of whichever conspiracy theory the campers believed in, the faraway dock had developed a very spooky reputation and and they did not need to be told twice to not go near it. No one's going near it. Well, unless you're Kyle. After the director and some of the counselors had gone up and spoken, the campers were allowed to finish their meal and then make their way back to their cabins. So Mark and Kyle finish their meal and they start walking back. They go into their cabin. They're getting set up in their bed. Their two other cabin mates come in and they're all kind of chatting and joking around. And at some point they turn off the lights and they want to go to bed. And after a little while, after the lights have been turned off in the cabin and everyone's trying to sleep, Kyle breaks the silence by saying, hey guys, I really want to swim out to the faraway dock this summer. Now, Mark and the other two that were in there with Kyle had heard Kyle say this before. He talked incessantly the summer before about wanting to swim out to the faraway dock, but he never did. And he really never showed any serious attempt 
at wanting to go out there. And so when he's saying this now, they're not taking him seriously at all. And so they kind of laughed and said, yeah, it's pretty creepy that doc out there. I wonder why we can't go out there. And they kind of had a quick discussion about, you know, the various hot theories around why you can't go out there. And ultimately they just kind of wrote it off and went to sleep. The next morning, Mark and Kyle got up and began their walk over to the dining hall to get some breakfast. And on the walk, Kyle says to Mark, hey, I wanna swim out to the faraway dock today at lunch. Will you come with me? And so to this point, Mark has only ever heard Kyle talk about the faraway dock and going to it in theory. There's never been a timestamp of this is when we're gonna do it. And all of a sudden, Mark's thinking, Kyle's, Kyle might be serious. He might actually wanna do this. And so Mark looks at Kyle and he's like, are you sure that's a good idea? Because I know there's lots of theories about why we can't go out there, but it's pretty clear the camp counselor and the director believe it's a dangerous place. And Kyle just kind of smirks and he's like, meh, I don't believe that. My dad told me that dock is probably just rotting and that's why they don't want us to be on it. And so I think as long as we're not jumping on it and we stay towards the edge of the dock on the main beams, we should be fine. At this point, Mark wants to convince Kyle not to do it. So he takes another approach and he goes, well, Kyle, what about the swim out there? I mean, that's a difficult swim and you know, you're not, you're not their best swimmer. So how do you feel about that? And Kyle shrugs and he's like, ah, we'll just take some pool noodles and we'll take our time going out there. And hey, if I start drowning, you can just rescue me. Mark started to get the sense that this was gonna happen whether he participated or not. And Mark's thinking to himself, if he goes and he's successful at getting out to the far away dock and I basically back out because I'm too scared to go, I'm gonna have a whole summer of living that down and spending all my time with this guy who's gonna rub it in my face. And so Mark didn't know what else to say to Kyle and he just says, all right, if you go, I'll go with you. So Mark and Kyle go in, they have their breakfast, and then afterwards they split up because they each had different activities that morning. And so they don't see each other for a couple of hours. And then it comes to be lunchtime and Mark knows this is the time they were gonna swim out to the faraway dock. And he's hoping as he's walking towards the dining hall that somehow Kyle's forgotten or has changed his mind. And as he gets right in front of the dining hall, he hears Kyle yell his name and he looks to the side of the building. There was this big forest right next to the dining hall and he sees Kyle and he's got his bathing suit on and his pool noodle in hand. He's got an extra one as well. And next to Kyle are his two other cabin mates who also have bathing suits on and are also holding pool noodles. Mark's pretty disappointed disappointed at this point because now it's really happening. He had put on his bathing suit so you know he's ready and he walks over to Kyle and his other two cabin mates and the whole time he's he's kind of hoping that a camp counselor or one of the directors will see him and will question them and stop them from doing what they're about to do and so he's kind of taking his time looking over his shoulder trying to be extra suspicious as he walks across this field like look at me I'm doing something bad I hope no one catches me and he makes it to the tree line and no one catches him. And Kyle hands him his pool noodle. And then Kyle and the other two cabin mates turn and start kind of walking slash running into the woods and Mark follows after them. And as they're running, Kyle turns around and tells Mark that their cabin mates didn't want to be left out. And that's why they're here. And Mark had a sinking feeling that probably they had the same reaction that he did, which is, if I don't do this with him, he's gonna rub this in my face for the whole summer and I'm living with him. And I'd rather just swim to this horrible dock than put up with that for the whole summer. And so they finally make it to the swimming area and they have their main dock that juts out into the water. And then there's the, the closer floating dock and then way over there is the far away dock. And as soon as they get onto the beach, they're kind of exposed. And the main camp, if they were down at the water's edge, they could look and see them if they were looking in that direction. And so the boys immediately get into the water and they put themselves up against the main dock, kind of obscuring them from view from anybody that's over at the main side of camp. And they begin swimming out to the faraway dock. The swim out was super easy. It's beautiful outside, it's sunny, the water feels great. They had their pool noodles to rest on, so not much energy to actually do the swim itself. And they were taking their time because they had at least about an hour and a half to two hours before they'd need to be back at camp before someone recognized they were gone. And so they get about three quarters of the way out to the faraway dock and it's the first time they can see it more or less up close. Because before this, none of them had been to the faraway dock and had never been close to the faraway dock. So this is the first time they're really getting a good look at it. And the dock is pretty unremarkable. It looks a little bit more beat up than the other dock. The wood is more gray, and it looks like there's probably a good amount of splinters on there, but it definitely does not look like it's so rotten that if they climb on it, it's gonna collapse under their weight, which makes them happy because now they know they can actually get on it and take a break from swimming for a second. But they were kind of let down. You know, they're, they're nearing this thing that's 
it's become almost like folklore within their camp and it's just kind of a huge letdown that it looks like any other dock. They finally made their way right up to the ladder, which was fairly rusted over. And Mark was actually the first one to be in front of the ladder and he was about to grab it and step onto it when he stops. And the other three are right behind him and they're like, what? And he goes, look at that. And on the ladder is this thick bodied, wide, fat spider with long legs that's just perched on the rung of the ladder. And so the boys all see the spider and they're like, okay, number one, I'm not touching that ladder. I'm gonna be climbing up somewhere else. I'll figure out a way to get on this dock that does not involve this ladder. And two, how did the spider get out here? It's huge, what is it doing out here? Like, where did it come from? There's no land around us. But they're like, you know what, whatever. There's one random spider on this dock, can't be a big deal. And so they make their way over to the side, so away from the ladder. And Mark actually grabs onto the edge of the dock, the wood, and manages to pull himself up. And they push him up as he gets up there. And Mark turns around and he hoists up Kyle. And they end up hoisting up the next two. And before long, you have all four on the dock. And they're looking at each other and they're feeling pretty good about it. Even though it was a letdown that there's not much going on out here besides maybe that weird spider. But it'll make for a great story. And they couldn't wait to get back and tell their friends that they had made it out to the faraway dock. So they weren't ready to just jump right back in the water and go right back to shore. So they laid down on the wooden slats of the dock itself and they just enjoyed laying in the sun. And as Mark's laying there, he hears a very distinctive scratching sound or rustling sound that's coming from right underneath the floorboards that he's laying on. And the dock itself was resting on these big blue barrels to stay afloat. And so Mark's laying there thinking, maybe the barrel is rotating underneath the wood and it's causing a weird sound, or, or maybe there's some residual waves from us moving around and displacing the water that's you know lapping up against the side of the barrels. But Mark, at the time, was not really overanalyzing this. This is just his initial thoughts of what the sound could be. He's not remotely concerned about what the sound is. He just took stock of it. And at some point, Mark and the other guys stand up because they're kind of bored of just laying there, and they start goofing around and pushing each other and trying to see if they can push each other off of the dock. And then they start playing one of their favorite games that they play on the other floating dock, where they all kind of shimmy to one corner of the dock and try to get that side to begin to submerge without falling off. So the boys shuffle to the corner of the dock and they're all kind of jokingly jockeying for position, you know, because they're going to flood the side and they don't want to fall off. And so they get in position and the dock starts to sink. And so after about a third of the dock was now underwater, they start hearing a scratching sound like the one Mark had heard when he was laying on his back. And all of a sudden, hundreds of those huge, thick bodied, long legged spiders start coming out from underneath the dock through the breaks in the wood. They're pouring out frantically, trying to climb out from underneath the dock because the boys have just flooded their nest. And so hundreds of these things are pouring out from underneath and sliding down towards the boys because it's on an angle. And Kyle, in a panic, loses his footing and falls face first onto the dock. But because his weight shifted so quickly, the dock went down flat again. And now Kyle's laying on the dock as these spiders are swarming his body, getting in his hair. And Mark and the other two are still on the dock and they can feel the spiders at their feet and they jump into the water. And Mark, as soon as he hits the water, he sees there's hundreds of spiders in the water. They're all over the place. And that's when he feels one in his hair and he's trying to swat it off of his head and he dives underwater thinking that's gonna get rid of it. But no, he feels it grip down tight on his hair and he had to reach up and actually grab the body of the spider and pull it off of his hair. He swims up, there's more spiders around him. And he frantically starts swimming away and he hears Kyle screaming and he sees him jump into the water, still trying to pull spiders off of his body. And then the boys would swim as fast as humanly possible to shore the whole time, either literally pulling spiders out of their hair that were clinging to their hair or their ears or believing because they just had this horrible experience that there are more spiders on them it's so the whole time you know they're pulling spiders off even if they aren't there like ricky bobby in talladega nights he thinks he's on fire when he's not that's the situation they're in but with spiders they finally get to shore and they're looking each other over to make sure there's no more spiders on them in their shorts on their back in their hair and their ears and finally all the spiders are gone and they're safe again. Mark said he'll never get over the trauma of this horrifying event. And he says what really gets to him is when he thinks about when he was laying on his back on the dock and the other three were doing the same thing and he heard that rustling, that scratching sound. That was the sound of hundreds of these massive spiders that were literally inches away from them perched underneath the dock. And not just any spider, but the dock spider. And they're named that because they make their home in docks because they typically hunt for fish, small fish, 
uh, insects as well. And they have the ability to run on water. They have this waxy substance on their legs that keeps them from sinking. And they can even jump on water and then land again on water to avoid being eaten by fish. And they can go underwater for up to 30 minutes. They can effectively scuba dive because they trap air on their hairy arms and underneath their bellies and they breathe that while they're underwater. And so these spiders identified the faraway dock as a great spot to live and they must have ran out on the water to this dock and then made a home underneath and then no one's disturbing them, so they flourished. Later on, Mark would find out from one of the camp counselors that the real reason the faraway dock was off limits, the reason that they didn't want anyone going out there, is because they discovered the faraway dock was a breeding ground for these dock spiders. And they tried to get rid of them, but they kept coming back. And so after a number of failed attempts, they finally just gave the faraway dock to the dock spiders. And the reason they don't tell the campers about it is because they don't want to scare them. And so that's that. I hope you enjoyed today's story. If you found the secret in today's episode, please tell us what it is in the comment section and give us the timestamp where it's located in the episode. And if you're the first to do that, we'll pin you at the top of the comment section. If you enjoyed today's video and you haven't done this already, please invite the like button to your destination wedding and tell them it is totally 100% casual dress code, but then actually have a black tie wedding. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our three, four, even five weekly uploads. If you wanna get in touch with me, you can direct message me on Instagram or on Twitter. My username for both platforms is the same. It's just John Ballin 416 I also have a ton of content over on TikTok where my username is Mr. Ballin. If you have a story suggestion, please submit it to our subreddit just called Mr. Ballin. It's linked in the description below. So whether I see you on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, YouTube, some combination, just know that I really appreciate your support. And until next time, that's going to do it. See ya.